How the Onion Got Its Layers Written by Sudha Murthy Illustrations by Priyanka Panchpande And this is a Puffin Books publication Chapter 1 The kingdom of Ullas was very prosperous The subjects were happy The farmers had grown a bumper crop and the kingdom was surrounded by friendly allies. But the king and queen of Ullas were very sad. Their sadness seemed to envelop them wherever they went. This was because they really longed for a child and did not have one. One day, they learnt of a place in the forests in the kingdom where if you prayed hard and well, you were granted your wish. They went there and for many days prayed to the goddess of the forest for a long time. Finally, their prayers were heard and the goddess appeared before them in a flash of green light. What do you wish for, my dear children? She asked. The king and queen, overjoyed, bowed low and said, We wish to have a child. So be it. You will soon have a little girl, said the goddess, shimmering in the greenery. But remember, though she will be a loving child, she will have one flaw. She will love new clothes too much and it will make life difficult for you. Do you still want such a child? The king and queen looked at each other with their eyes full of hope and love. Yes, we do, they said to the goddess. We can't think of anything else we want more in this world. The goddess smiled and vanished back among the trees. Chapter 2 Soon, as had been said, the queen gave birth to a lovely baby girl. Oh, what a beauty the little thing was! With her jet black hair, thick eyelashes and long toes and fingers. They named her Bina. The kingdom rejoiced in their king's happiness and for a while there was complete joy everywhere. Bina grew up a child loved by everyone. She became prettier by the day and with her charming manners and ready laughter, she filled everyone's hearts with joy. But as the goddess had said, she did have one flaw. She loved new clothes. She loved clothes so much, she had to have a new outfit every day. She would refuse to wear the same clothes twice. Tailors from all over the kingdom, as well as outside its borders, created beautiful, extraordinary clothes for her. Silk, cotton, wool, you name it, and Bina had a dress or sari of that material. Blues, greens, reds, pinks, every color in nature was present in her wardrobe. For a while, the king and queen were happy to let her have her new clothes every day. But soon, they realized that they were spending all their money and time looking for new tailors and clothes for their daughter. This had to stop. Chapter 3 The king and queen quacked and cajoled and pleaded and scolded but Bina remained unmoved. One day, the queen said to the king, This is the weakness that the goddess had warned us about. We can't let her continue like this. What should we do? The king thought about the problem for a few minutes. Then he said, The goddess knew that she would be born with this flaw. I am sure that she can provide a solution too. Why don't we send Bina to her? The queen agreed and called Bina. She said to her daughter, 
Bina, go to the forest and meet the goddess who blessed us with your presence in our lives. Ask her what should be done about your powerful desire to wear new clothes every day of your life. It is impractical and wasteful, my child. Bina agreed to meet the goddess, only to please her mother. The next day, Bina entered the dark green forest and prayed until the goddess appeared. She came in a flash of green light which lit up everything around her. Folding her hands, Bina told the goddess why she had come. I know your problem, my child. I will send you a few outfits every day. It will be unique. Its colors and design will delight you. But you should remember one thing. You cannot wear anything else. Nor can you exchange these clothes with anyone else. If you ever do that, there will be consequences. Why? Won't I be happy if I get a new dress every day? Pina asked, surprised and pleased at the goddess's words, I am happy to agree to this condition. The goddess smiled and vanished. Chapter 4 from then on, Bina woke up each morning to find an extraordinary new sari or dress lying ready by her bed. It was a dream come true for her. Bina enjoyed herself no end, carefully choosing matching earrings and bangles and shoes to go with her clothes. Everyone kept telling her how pretty she looked. But the excitement died down after a few months. No one remarked when Bina shashayed in wearing yet another fantastic dress. Oh, it's a goddess's gift, they all said. It's not something you or I can ever have, her friends sighed as they shrugged and went their way. Bina grew sad. Then one day, while walking near the river, she noticed a girl wearing a simple cotton sari. There was something about the way the girl walked and how attractive she looked that made everyone turn and stare. Bina noticed people admiring the girl. She became jealous because no one noticed her beautiful clothes any longer, yet they had such praises for the simply dressed girl. She forgot all about the goddess's warning. She went up to the girl and said, Will you take my clothes and give me your sari in return? It is so lovely that people can't take their eyes off it. The girl was astonished. The famous princess is offering to take my sari and give me her marvelous dress in exchange? I can't believe my luck she thought. The girl bowed down and said, Of course, your highness, I will give you my sari. As soon as Bina wore the girl's sari, there was a flash and a bang. Her surroundings changed and she found herself transported deep into the forest in front of the goddess. Chapter 5 Bina the goddess called. I told you that you cannot give away or exchange the clothes I gave you. But you had done just that. I am afraid there is a punishment for not listening to me. I will have to take you away from the world of humans forever. Bina looked down, sad that she might no longer see her family. She thought of her parents' tear-strained faces and the grief of the people in her kingdom who loved her dearly. Then she spoke aloud, I will go away, but do grant me one last wish. Turn me into something that will remind everyone of their beloved princess, something they may even find useful. 
the goddess smiled and turned beena into a plant do you know which plant beena became an onion have you noticed that the onion has many layers those are all the dresses that beena once wore and have you seen people's eyes water when they cut onions this is because unknown to us the goddess of the forest makes us shed tears for the beautiful kind-hearted princess and that is the end of the story acknowledgments when i was a little girl the onion was the only vegetable that fascinated me endlessly i wondered why my mother shed tears when she peeled an onion and why its layers seemed to go on forever and ever i also enjoyed the taste of it once it was cooked the onion bulb became inseparable from our vegetable list in my house as i grew so did my imagination until one bright day i figured out the secret of the magical onion and decided to share it and that is how my children this story has found its way into your tiny hands read away my little dear friends i would like to thank sukriti kurana my fond editor for her work on this book i would also like to thank sohini mitra for the idea of little chapter books and priya kapoor for the consistent support from penguin random house